last li lightning talk this morning would be by Jeff Houston, AP Nick. Good morning. Ten minutes, right? Or seven? Okay. Um, so this is all about how well we're doing with IPv6. Uh, and this is work that I've done with George Michelson at APNIC. So in trying to measure how much IPv6 is out there, the problem is that all you folk don't share your data. You keep on saying that, you know, your dirty secrets are your dirty secrets and I can't have a look at it, which is a bit of a bummer. So I actually can't tell you how many packets are flowing through your networks that are IPv6 flavoured because I don't have access to that data. But what I do have access to is some BGP routing tables, some DNS logs and some web servers. And all of these data sets go back over the last four years. Because what I'm trying to understand is after about 50 million slide presentations and ooh, about you know, 500 man years of you guys sitting here listening to how big and wonderful IPv6 is, have you done anything? So let's find out how well you've been doing. Um, all of these things are bottom left, top right. So here you go. How many routes are in the IPv6 routing table since 2004 every hour? Bottom left, top right. God, you've done well, 1,500. How many are in the IPv4 routing table? Oh my God, 280,000. What do they look like when you compare the two together? <laughs> Oops. Um, so OK, let me be kind to this. Let me do ratios. IPv4, IPv6 as a percentage wise, you're currently going at 0.45%. And it hasn't changed in four years. You haven't been listening. Heads up, stop doing your email, start doing some V6, right? Now, you know, that's saying that V6 is 0.5% of V4 in terms of the routing table entries, yeah? But it's kind of unfair. It's kind of unfair because the other thing you've been doing in IPv4 is slicing and dicing. Every single AS does on average 8.9 routing entries, so perhaps I'm being very unfair to V6. Well, maybe it's a bullshit question anyway, because a whole bunch of you take a V6 prefix, advertise it, and do nothing with it. Not good. OK, so let's do it a different way. Let's ask a different question. How many of you as ASs are capable of running V6? So here you go, bottom left, top right, number of ASs in the IPv6 routing table. 1,100, I'm stunned. Number of IASs in the IPv4 routing table, 30,000. <coughs> bottom left, top right. So OK, I won't even do the dead red line at the bottom. This is the relative ratio. This looks a bit more interesting. Some of you are getting slightly interested in IPv6. And in fact, since 2006, more of you have been getting more interested. That's slightly a different stat. And what it actually says is that there used to be around 1 in 52%. And now it's getting up to 4% of you are actually doing something in V6 AS by AS. Slightly better. But you know, the AS count's pretty weird. Because there are 25,000 stub ASs and only 5,000 that actually do transit for other ASs. Folk in the middle. And of the folk in the middle, 15% of you are actually doing something in V6. And 2% of the folk at the edge. So maybe if you're doing transit for others, you have been listening. And if you haven't, you aren't listening. Because V6 is in the middle, not at the edge. Interesting. So OK, 15% of the transit ASs are announcing prefixes. Are they routing V6? Don't think so. So I need to look a bit harder. Let's go and look at via DNS. And what I'm really looking at is the reverse resolution. What are the pointer queries for V6 compared to V4? Well, you know, here's the graph, and I've actually separated it out. This is actually sort of somewhere between 1% and less. And I separated out between Asia Pacific networks and the rest of the world. And somewhere in early 2000, uh, sorry, yeah, early 2008, someone got really, really interested in reverse uh, resolving DNS names. But you know, the DNS is so bloody weird. There are caches, forwarders, and all kinds of crap. And when you start looking at the authority of data servers, even though it's sort of 0.2%, the real issue is that none of us have a bloody clue what's happening with DNS anyway. So it's kind of a useless number. So let's move on. Um, the next thing is to actually have a look at web server stats. 
And you know, the other thing that you guys won't give me is access to your web server logs, you bastards. So I've got to use my own and write very kindly let me their logs as well. And what I look is the number of unique visitors per day, yeah? And all this kind of methodology, but cut the bullshit. What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is when you're dual homed in V6 and V4, what's the proportion of visitors in each protocol, yeah? Day by day. And here's what happened in APNIC every day since the 1st of January 2004. Somewhere between half a percent and zero. And it kind of got a little bit more, you know, busy more recently, you know. But, you know, we ain't Google. And these numbers are tiny. So the noise factor is pretty high. So that's just one web server. So then Wright very kindly gave me their data from Europe. That looks kind of interesting. Put the two together and I get that. Oh, God, we agree. So, you know, maybe it is round about somewhere between 0.2 to 0.5%. But it's weird, yeah? Because every single time we hold a meeting, like, you know, Aaron this week, oh God, I better turn on V6 and look politically correct. And then when you go home again, it's, oh, bugger that for a joke, and you're back to where you were again. <laughs> However, um, yes, the relative use has been increasing slowly, and you know, if you have a look at the patient, the patient's doing 0.4%. So is this a case of you're actually getting interested in V6, or is it because Vista's shipping that automatically tries to do it on you by default? What's the tunnelling going on? Well, the beauty of it is you can actually have a look at source addresses, right? And here's the 6 to 4 as a percent of all the V6, and here's the Teredo as a percent of all the V6. That Teredo figure is weird, because if that's Vista, it should never happen, because Vista only uses Teredo as the absolute last resort when even V4 has failed, and this is dual-homed. What are you guys doing with Teredo? It's not Vista, it's my radio. It's all you Linux people out there. You're playing, aren't you? And you've been playing since, ooh, you know, late 2006. What does it look like? Well, I can try and smooth this around, but it's as noisy as hell. But what I can say is that you're still around one quarter of all the visits to these sites are actually sitting there on tunnels. And that hasn't changed one little bit. So what's the kind of thing with this? Well, in the routing sense, in terms of AS, is around one in six of you are actually playing with V6 one way or another. But realistically, you know, the V6 out there on the net, around four parts per thousand. And quite frankly, that's exaggerating the number because I'm undercounting V4. Because a huge number of you sit behind NATs and I'm actually measuring the NATs, not the end hosts. And the other thing too is that, you know, like it or not, you know, no one actually really visits apnic.net. We're not the world's most exciting website, you know, dirty little secret. And, you know, the ones that do visit it are actually only tech weenies. So if I actually looked at some decent populist sites, my guess is the number of people actually out there in V6 is lower. Not four parts per thousand. I'll be generous, two parts per thousand. So what does that really say about the big picture? The whole idea is the internet keeps growing, the IPv4 size is gradually getting there to nowhere, and the theory was that IPv6 was going to come to the rescue. So I can give you some numbers now. You're almost close to the death of v4 in terms of availability, and what you're going to do with v6, oh my god, you're starting late. Right now you're at 0.2 per cent, and you have, ooh, about a year and a half, which really means it's time to get moving. Thank you. Six minutes and 35 slides. Very well done, sir. Um, Todd Underwood, there, quick question on all of those graphs, uh, the prefixes, the ASs, there's this weird dip slash flattening for all of 2006. Yes. What was that? Well, you know, actually, as far as I can see, what happened is that the academic and research folk and a few others in 2004 really decided that that was the year of IPv6. And there was actually an extraordinary amount of effort. In and, and was it? The year of V6? It wasn't. It, wasn't. it was not. OK, thank it you. It didn't happen. But a huge amount of effort, actually, from the research networks all over the world in this area actually pumped the numbers up for a while. And then they all lost interest. And around 2006, early 2007, it's kind of boring. And it's only more recently when these numbers about V4 exhaustion have actually said, oh my god, I won't be able to resign and run away from the problem. All of a sudden, where you're working now, the job you're in now is the problem. You actually have to solve it. You can't run away. Is I suspect why there's more interest now. Hi, uh, uh, do I? just a quick note. Um, on six six oh six, we turned down the six bone. So that's um, 
if I go all the way back to that slide, 2006. Yeah, you'll see the six bone actually disappear. Yeah. Hi, Jeff. Um, Roque from Lagnik here. Uh, we're also measuring some, some of this stuff, and one of the interesting things we did is try to measure how many access to our registration system we have over V6 against over V4 to see how, how much our own community is using V6 to access to our own services. And we get something like two different V6 addresses per week, and they're normally our own. Yeah, but counting the geeks is kind of unfair. <laughs> But it's still, it's still we just get our own address. Thank you. All right, last question. <clears throat> Gee, with as much as I had to drink last night, this looks pretty bad. Oh, really? I, w I was just wondering if in the near future you see the possibility of a government bailout. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, there's been some speculation on an address market and some speculation on the price of addresses. And uh, one of the more wild estimates is that if you want a slash eight, it's going to cost approximately $700 billion. Thank you. All right, next up we'll have uh, Simon Lockhart with uh, Bogon. 